Live 2D Pop Quiz. Test your rigging knowledge. These are some trickier things and common misconceptions that I didn't go into detail to teach in my beginner tutorial, but if you have a big brain, you can figure them out. So let's begin. Question number one with four parts. You want to create a deformer by selecting multiple things. Is the following a correct selection that won't give you this error? It's a common one. Part A. Yes or no? The answer is B because they are not on the same hierarchy. I'll do more explanation after. Question 1, Part B. The answer is yes because they are on the same hierarchy. Might be easier to see if you collapse head Z. Okay, Part C. I hope it's getting easier. And it's yes, as you can see here. And last, part D. The answer is no. And if you were to select pupil, you would select its parent deformer pupil X1 instead because it's on the same hierarchy as everything else. But let me just quickly explain the hierarchy concept. Basically, you can view deformers, these green little things, as folders. So just like Photoshop folders, but in Life 2D, you cannot select things from different folders and try to make a new folder to group them all together. You should only group things under the same folder hierarchy. But Photoshop is not strict about hierarchy, so you could group things from different folders. But you see how that removed the leg right layer from its original folder? So it broke the original hierarchy, and you really don't want that when rigging. Also, pro tip to navigate through hierarchies in Life 2D, Let's say if you want to select everything under face XY, but everything is expanded, you can just right click on face XY and click collapse inside content and you'll have a much clearer hierarchy. You can also click this button to collapse everything, then click the face XY on the top to quickly find where you were before. I like to use this method more because it also cleans up everything else. Okay, but back to the quiz. Question number two, on this star mesh, you first add three key points on two parameters, X and Y. You then rig X as left and right and Y as up and down. Where will the star be at the top left corner key point, as circled in red? The answer is D, it will remain in the center. As you can see here, I'm moving it around and it's back to the center at the four corners. That's because we haven't touched the four corners yet, and if we synthesize corners, only then the answer will become A. Also, if you rigged X before adding Y, then the answer could become C. Okay, question number three. You want Poopoo's ears to appear when ear on is toggled, but disappear when bald is toggled. Which key point is the only instance where ears should appear? C because it satisfies our requirement where ear on is on and bold is off. Question number four, three parts. How many unique transformations can a deformer have when it's attached to the following key points? The answer is three transformations. Easy, right? Right? Part B, same question. The answer is nine. If you link the parameters together and then count how many dots there are, you can see that it's 9. Part C. Again, same question. The answer is C, 18. Let me do some in-depth explanation. First, this is proof that there are 18 transformations a mesh can do while being attached to these parameters. So the mesh is able to be in 18 different grids, meaning that it can have 18 different transformations. You can think of this as dimensions. So one parameter is one dimension. And if you add a new dimension slash parameter, for each new key point you add to that, all key points on all previous dimensions will exist again. Okay, let me show you this in practice. Let's say this is your face. You've rigged face X, Y, but you want to add a new parameter that's face off where you make it disappear when it's turned on. But you've only made it disappear at this one key point and not to eight others. So when you added two key points on face off, you essentially duplicated the amount of transformations you had before. 
but there is a quick way to turn down the opacity for all the eight other key points, which is to go to multiple keys editing and select all the key points you need the opacity to be zero at and turn down the opacity on the right and click OK. So this is why I don't recommend having more than two parameters on one single object. You would only do that if you have specific transformations you need to control. For example, if you rig lean, you would want a wider head movement when leaned in. So it's literally just this one rotation deformer where you only make it move when leaned in. It's like conditional rigging. But normally you don't need this. For opacity changes, you can make another deformer on top or blend shapes. So I view blend shapes as recording whatever action you do to the object and it will automatically apply that no matter which key points you're on. So this is why I can attach like five, six blend shapes for like hair physics and V Bridger. But yeah, if you see this, that means you're in the fourth dimension. It's time to stop. Okay, continue with the quiz. Question number five. You're testing your model and suddenly you see a weird shape that isn't supposed to be there. What went wrong? The answer is Texture Atlas. Sometimes the auto texture placement thing doesn't do a great job and it might overlap your layers. So just move it apart and you should be fine. Or if you're lazy like me and don't want to wait for the texture to load, you could also adjust the mesh manually and exclude the extra shape. Next, question number six. In this physics effectiveness window, you want your input angle Y to have maximum effectiveness without changing the other numbers. What will be your number? The answer is 10 because all position X numbers added up must not exceed 100. Same with angle, by the way. Okay, question number seven. You want this earring rotation deformer to tilt with head Z? Which pendulum number do you assign it? The answer is A1, because only the first pendulum dot, which is number 1, follows the angle input. Next, question number 8. Which of the following does skinning not do? C. It does everything else but create a physics group and connect the rotation deformer parameters to a pendulum. You have to do that yourself. But I sometimes do wish that it does though. Next, question number 9. What's this? Although we cannot completely eliminate B and D, it's most probably onion skin. I feel like every rigger has toggled this on by accident in some point in their career. But it's just this button right here to deactivate it. Okay, bonus pro questions. After receiving their model, the client asks for adjustments to how wide the mouth opens. Which update files need to be sent? So only the MOC3 file needs to be sent because that's where it stores all the deformer and mesh informations. Bonus question number two. Which file contains VTube Studio's tracking parameters? I swear these are useful to know. The answer is D, the vtube.json file. And the reason this is useful is because usually if I need to send update files to a client and I haven't added any new VTube pseudo parameters, I would delete this file just in case the client had made changes to their parameters already, which I don't want to overwrite. So this is a breakdown of what each file does when you export your model. I found it useful because, for example, if you only change something in physics, you only need to send that one file and not the entire folder again. You can also individually export your physics settings instead of waiting for the whole model to export. Okay, so that was the quiz. There was um, 14 points, including all the parts and two points for bonus questions. How many points did you get? Let me know your score in the comments. Even if you didn't get a perfect score, if you revise or understand everything, you still pass. Keep learning and rigging.